if they're used to, if they expect to read, if they are familiar with reading graphs like this, then uh, use this. But it's a good way of showing the relationship between two different metrics, right? Transactions, an average order value, and now I'm breaking them down by US state. And it's a really good way of identifying the outliers. So right now here, I can easily identify like three outliers here, which have a very large number of transactions and a close to average order value, right? New York, Texas, and Washington, right? So these three. And I have some states that have really large average order values, but just few transactions, one. So just one from this region, 11 from Utah for a high average order value, and from Tennessee, 15. So it, it really helps figure out the kind of cluster of outliers and see where should we focus on the rest of the analysis. This one plots two different metrics against the one dimension, but bubble chart is just like that, but it takes three metrics, two metrics for two different axes, right? So right now we know that there is one entity, in this case, because it's a browser, Chrome, which has a large number of transactions, very high average order value compared to others, right? But we can also see another metric, e-commerce conversion rate, and we can see that also it's higher in e-commerce conversion rate, not just average order value and transaction. It could be that it was here, but had a really low and small e-commerce conversion. So we can see three different metrics broken down by a single dimension, which sometimes can be nice. Another example of the same kind of bubble chart, but different, same metrics, okay, e-commerce conversion rate, transaction after draw value, but this time broken down by a device category. Again, we expect desktop to, to be here and it's here. So it verifies our expectation, doesn't provide any other value to us in this case, at least. Sometimes again, just like the, um, the chart that we've seen earlier, if there is so much diversity in the values across one of these axes, then we can apply log scale from 110, 100, 200, 1000. So it's a really large diversity across the amount of revenue coming from different channels. If we want to just use a simple linear axis here, so if I remove this one, then every single will be here around zero and say direct is up here. Sometimes this logarithmic scale helps us see the differences a little bit, but again, we have to be used to reading it. And for example, I'm not used to read it easily when it's presented like this. I know that it's much higher, but I don't know how much higher. It's 10 times as much, so it's a lot. Another example, again, of the same graph. Now we have product revenue and the quantity of sold across different categories of product. Again, we can see new products. They sell a lot and we, get, we are getting a really large revenue out of them and followed by apparel, which again, they sell a lot, but not as much quantity as the products. 